By the time the bridge was begun, a ferry service had been running across the Firth of Forth at Queen's Ferry for almost a thousand years. At its peak, the service ran every 15 minutes. Four boats, they ran till the end of the service when the bridge opened, and I was on the Robert and Bruce. Well, he left from the pier behind me here. There was two piers there. And one boat was at the south side, one boat was at the north side, and the other two were in the middle. So that when your, when your neighbour was coming into the north side, you were leaving. And when you got to the south side and unloaded and loaded again, the other boat was coming in to chase you out again. Four lanes of traffic from here up, right out to the anchor gates. I started on the ferries when I was 15, and I was there until the service finished. I fair enjoyed it. Between them, former ferry skippers Jim Taylor and Stephen Reid served almost 40 years carrying passengers between North and South Queen's Ferry. When they first mentioned a bridge, I thought, right, it's times I was thinking about something else. Well, you just accepted there was going to be a bridge there. Everybody kept talking about it, but it seemed to come on very sudden. My father had a kiosk on the pier that sold teas and coffees and everything. You were very busy in the morning with the people going to Edinburgh and coming over from Edinburgh. You took uh, roughly 30 cars. You could take lorries, buses, caravan, and passengers, of course. Every day was different, every trip was different. You had different traffic, different weather conditions. Come down from Edinburgh by bus, never had cars. Cross on the ferry, that was the Sunday trip. I looked around the village, boat back in the bus to Edinburgh again. That was the Sunday out. We had very many regular travellers, hundreds of regular travellers. You know, you didn't know their names. You looked at the car coming down the pier and said, oh, here's a tea without milk and a pie or whatever they, they wanted. You know, you had it ready for them. Probably around about the early 50s, it began to be mooted that there was going to be a bridge in the future. So it just was a very real fear that we were going to lose our livelihood eventually. The queues for the ferry boats, especially at weekends, used to come right along the front, right along the prom. The traffic was enormous at this side. Traffic going south. We were running half the night trying to clear the traffic. They'd been trying for at least 200 years to get a bridge or a tunnel um, to cross the, the Forth because they were aware that this was a main link between the south of Scotland and the Highlands. Going back a bit to the early 50s, you could sit at the pier for 15 minutes and leave for nothing. Nobody had cars. And then all of a sudden, everybody had cars, and we just couldn't cope. Cars, for the first time, uh, really became available to a uh, working class population. Before that, you had to be rich to own a car. You could see they needed a bridge. It was, it was hopeless. Um, we had eight, eight out of 